The OD RVM action camera is an affordable, Wi-Fi enabled 1080p action camera suitable for beginners looking to use a camera in rough conditions. The camera comes in a nice case with a bunch of accessories including various mounts and an extra battery. For only $55 this is a great option for anyone wanting that GoPro versatility without spending a ton of money. Right now the camera's in the case and I am recording audio either to the camera but I also do have my iPhone recording audio as well for any of this. So you can kind of see how the sound sounds while it's in the case. And then I can also compare it to just an iPhone sitting on the table right here and you can be the judge of what you think of the audio quality. I almost always have the case on any action camera like this so I really judge the audio quality based on how it is in the case. Because if it's you know external and it's and it's by itself and it's got no protection well it's you know definitely not going to be scratch resistant at that point. You can easily scratch the lens. You can damage the camera itself because it doesn't have that protective case around it. I've been shooting with this camera for a couple days now and there are definitely some pros but there's also a few cons if you're familiar with GoPro cameras or action cameras this falls right in line with those it's actually pretty much the exact same form factor and style as pretty much any GoPro that you're probably used to I have a GoPro Hero 3 plus black edition and the thing that I like first of all about this camera that's immediately better is just the built-in LCD screen it does take a little bit more of the battery which that, by the way, is not the best on this camera. The battery does drain faster than I would like. Thankfully, you can replace the batteries if you want, but actually doing that is a challenge. I found myself struggling with the battery door latch. It could just be my model, but I think in general, the battery uh, swapping is just a little bit too difficult and cumbersome. And thankfully, you can shoot with this camera when it's plugged in with USB power, but there is an unfortunate, uh, I don't know, emission side effect that if that direct power is unplugged, that the camera actually just turns off. So while that's unfortunate, it is workable, I suppose. You just have to make sure that you keep a consistent power. Even if the internal battery is good, if that hardline power gets unplugged, you lose uh, power on the camera, which is really weird. This is the type of camera that's just like a cheap, almost throwaway. And that's what I really like about it, actually, is that while I was shooting with it, I found myself not really worried about you know if I misplace it or if I lose it or if it's damaged because it is so cheap it's so affordable compared to like a higher end GoPro that has more features and maybe a little bit more support on the firmware side it still is an expensive device and if you lose it or it's damaged it can be a big setback financially. <laughs> Since it's so cheap, judging the value of a camera like this can be difficult. It comes with a case, extra battery, and most of the mounts you would want. The camera even has a built-in screen for easy framing of shots and navigation of the menu. But it is only a 1080p camera and the image quality itself is just alright. By professional standards, it's pretty poor, but for your average user, it's probably acceptable. There's also a really nice and straightforward camera menu, which is incredibly easy and simple to navigate. You can just go right through it and everything you want from resolution and picture quality and white balance. You can dial it all in right there and it's not a problem to use at all. It's actually really easy because of that built-in LCD screen. So you can see all your settings right there and then you can pair it with the app on the iPhone or Android and do the settings that way and get a live feed via Wi-Fi direct to your phone. So really however you want to control and customize the camera settings, you can either do it on the camera, really easy, really straightforward, or you can also do it in the app, which also works really well. What about the indoor skydiving? Oh, yeah. No, that no. was my first video. She, right. she asked if you would do it, and I said no. Aside from just it being kind of like a throwaway, cheaper camera, you know, the features aren't as robust and aren't as uh, feature-packed. You're only limited to 1080. There is a 4K version of this camera. I haven't tested that one myself, but this one's 1080. It's only 30 frames a second. There's no like high speed, slow motion stuff that you can shoot. It's pretty bare bones. And for a cheap, affordable, just kind of more entry level, I guess, this is really like a stripped down version of an action camera. So if you're looking to do any kind of like filmmaking or quality video production, this probably isn't the camera for you, but if you're looking for something that you just don't have to worry about, it can just be in your backpack and you want to use it for YouTube videos, vlogs, this is a great camera for someone like that. Just as a nice gift because it's cheaper on your wallet. You don't have to spend as much getting them something that they probably don't need. And then that way if they lose it or they stop using it or whatever happens to it, it's not that big of a deal because you're only out like 60 bucks compared to 200, 300, 400 dollars for something you know with the name brand on it. Oh, come on, come back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Overall,
overall, this is a good option if you're looking for something that you won't mind if it gets damaged or lost, or just as an inexpensive gift for a friend or family member. It's the kind of camera you could buy for your niece or nephew. They'll have fun with it, and you won't mind if they end up breaking it or misplacing it.